there. I am Angel Ellers, one of the environmental educators here at the Green Belt. And so we already learned about the plants that you'll find inside and outside of the pond ecosystem. We also learned about some of the animals that you'll find outside of the, plant, the pond ecosystem. But I'm sure you're curious about the different animals that you would find inside. And there are larger animals, there are also smaller animals. We might call some of them macro or micro invertebrates. And we might need some really um, simple collection tools to gather them safely out of their home. So I'm just gonna show you some of the equipment that we have. We'll start with a few empty bins to collect um, and to sort different sizes and pieces of the pond that we do bring up out in the nets. We'll be going in there picking up leaves and things that won't go through the larger holes in the net and see what kind of microinvertebrates are hiding in there. We would also have different sized collection bins so that we can maybe put something interesting that we find inside and be able to observe them safely. Some of them have uh, magnifying glasses on top. Some of them are a little more interesting with other levels of magnification. Some of them don't have anything, um, just kind of a little way to observe a little bit better. You might be able to pick up your own hand magnifying glass, put it up to the container to see a little bit better what is happening inside. We're also gonna be using really simple tools like spoons, also paintbrushes, and these are to use because we're gonna be dealing with very small creatures. We wanna be really careful. What we also have is a tiny little pipette because again, these are small creatures, maybe sometimes eggs, that we wanna make sure that we're handling with care. And finally, what we're gonna need are some identification tools. Okay, so here we have a field guide to aquatic macroinvertebrates. And here we have some really nice picture cards so that we can try to match what we find in the bin to what's on the card. Alrighty, here we are down by the edge of the pond. And as I walked down here, I was very careful because it's very moist. It can be a little bit dangerous because it's a little bit slippery. Um, we wanna make sure not to damage too much of the mosses or the grasses as we approach the edge of the pond because this is an ecosystem. Um, and so this is where I am going to be collecting my specimens by doing an actual pond dip with my net and my empty basin. So what we do is we know that the majority of the life is kind of in the leaf litter right here as things are decomposing. We'll be able to find quite a bit of activity if we gently put the net into the pond and kind of swirl it around but not really get into the mud. We're going for a little bit of a surface dip. So as you can see, what I have here, lots of leaves, I have some mosses, and I'm going to empty it right into the empty basin. Once I do that, I'm going to be able to bring it up to my other basins that will have some water in them, and I'll be able to kind of sift through and see if I found anything. So here we are up on the deck and we have one bin filled with some things that we collected with our net. We have some water plants and some leaf litter here. And then we have the container that um, had clear water in it that we already brought some of these really cool active and alive specimens into so that we could see them a little clearer. Um, but I wanna give you just a little bit of a sample of how we might move um, a species from this collection bin into the water. So on this little leaf, we have what looks like a damselfly nymph, and I'm going to very carefully kind of put my spoon underneath it, give it a place to walk to, and you can see it kind of stable on there. And now I'm just gonna bring it right into the water and let it go into the container with the other creatures that we just found. And so what we have is a really nice collection of some of our local um, vertebrates and invertebrates from this pond. And what we can see is some activity of a uh, water beetle. We have two different true bugs here. We have a water boatman. And we also have a back swimmer. The larger 
creature that you can see here is actually a tadpole. It's not very active at this moment, but just a few minutes ago it was. We have various different sorts of worms and we have an actual leech in here. If you can see on this side, it's um, very indicative of the way that it moves. You can tell that it is a leech. Um, we also have a few of those damselfly nymphs that at this moment are very still, but those were probably the most um, prevalent species that we found on this pond dip. We also have several different types of snails with different shaped shells. We also have a few nematodes. And I bet if I looked a little bit longer, I'd be able to find a few more creatures. And I used our cards to help me identify some of the creatures that maybe were a little bit more difficult to identify because some of them can be pretty similar. Um, but they come in handy also to help you understand the different um, anatomical features of these creatures.